Well, we just rolled into camp. We'll get the truck unpacked, camp opened up, the water turned on. Get the harrows out of the back. Then we'll readjust the solar panels. Gorgeous day. We're here a few weeks later than normal with all the corona stuff going. Usually I'm here before Memorial Day and I'm here Memorial Day weekend every year since I own the camp, except for this year. But what I'm gonna wind up doing, right now my solar panels are still angled for the winter. So I'll readjust those. Some people have asked questions on the solar. The stand is basically just built out of a old satellite dish. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the old big basket style. All right, so here's one of those old school satellite dishes you can build a manual solar tracker out of in these people's dooryard. I stop, knock, nobody's home. But when I'm coming by, I'll stop and ask them if they want to part with it. In order to adjust the tilt, I take these cables off. I got the cables on there. Stabilize it in the wind. Because otherwise, it's like a big sail. So that kind of just gives it a little stiffness. There's a lot of flex right here. They never welded a sleeve in there, so it's just in the in the metal. And this thing is old as probably 40 years old, so been out in the wind rocking back and forth. But in order to adjust the tilt, you gotta take them off and then turn these. One thing too with this satellite dish setup, you could also make it a manual tracker. These bolts go all the way in and the pipe on the inside is right here. So these are just resting on the top of that pipe so it don't slide all the way down. These bolts hold it to the pipe so it doesn't move. So you could weld some little round stock on here to make handles to loosen those bolts. Weld a piece of round stock or pipe across there to make a handle and you could adjust it, loosen those, and then you could spin it to track the sun if you wanted to bring it over early in the morning and then follow it and like getting towards late afternoon when the sun's over this way, you could loosen it and rotate it if you needed to. I don't need to, like I said, my batteries get topped off pretty fast. I had a couple people ask me to explain my solar system. This is an old satellite dish that back in the day, it's probably 35, 40 years old. You could get free satellite TV, you put one of these dishes in and you had a control box and you turn a knob and it's got a 12 volt motor. It would send power to it and it would adjust the grab for the satellites. So I got it for free from a buddy of mine who was at his grandfather's place. And if I helped him take it down, I could have it. And I was thinking of making a redneck solar tracker out of it. So what I did is basically took the dish off and then I just put angle iron up and put my panels on it. If it wasn't able to tilt, which I use the turnbuckles to tilt it to get my angle for summer and then winter. Winter time I angle it up so the snow slides off. Otherwise it would probably bend these pieces of angle iron. I got these cables on there just for support for the wind because it catches a lot of wind. But I got a reversing switch that I'm going to install inside the camp. It's a three-phase reversing switch. So basically I can reverse the polarity in order to tilt, tilt the panel one way or the other. We'll install that in a little while. So, so you can probably find these still 
in people's yards out in the woods. Most of them are overgrown that I see. Trees growing around them. You can probably approach people and get them for nothing or very little money. Didn't cost me much for this one. I think I got maybe 50, 60 bucks into it for angle iron and the cable. The reverse and switch I got for free from a factory that we were working at. They were throwing out a bunch of stuff and it's way overkill for what I'm gonna need it for, but it was free. It's industrial looking, so I thought it'd be kind of cool for my system. So I've got four 36 volt panels wired in parallel and then I charge it. 12 volt is my battery bank. So it goes in, goes into the charge controllers and then steps it down to 12 volts. Right there is the array disconnect. There's DC breakers behind it. You can hit that handle and disconnect the whole array from inside. So if you had to do maintenance on any of the charge controllers or anything, you can come out and shut it down. If there's any issues with the panels, one of those breakers inside would trip. All right, here's the main hub of activity here. Up here, you got the control panel. And that turns, turns it on and off from inverting. Then you have your array disconnects. This one's a 12 volt one for the panels you see on top of the camp. There's 12 volt panels going in there charging 12 volts, and this one's 36 volts charging 12 volts. Flexmax 60 amp charge controller, Flexmax 80 amp charge controller. And it goes down in here, there's two DC breakers, one for each one, so I could shut these off, shut those off, isolate these if I need to take one off for maintenance or replace it or whatever. One milliamp meter. Then I got the windmill brakes, tower one, tower two. Just some 12 volt pigtails for charging phones, GPSs, or whatever. And over here, my generator. Like I said, I got a Generac 7KW generator. So after about a 10 second delay, it'll change from inverting to charging. It'll monitor the batteries to see what it needs. It's a 125 amp charger, so it's sensing what the batteries are doing. It's already floating because my batteries are already topped off. So, shut that off. It goes back to inverting. So here's the inverter charger. Then I got some old disconnects that I took out of a factory that I use in case I need to isolate the inverter charger and just run the generator. Here's a battery switch for marine purposes, but I'd be able to, I can shut the inverter right off and be able to take, take it right out if I need to replace it or get it repaired which I have a spare because I had an issue with it once. And then you got your 300 amp T fuse that's in there. And basically that's this right here. So if there's any issue, the fuse will blow, protecting your system. Then you get the batteries. These, This is my old battery bank. I'm just beating on it. Batteries are seven or eight years old now. They're getting weak, so I got new new batteries to replace them. And that's that's basically this down here. All right, so this is my bison pump made right here in Maine. After they had the ice storm, guy came up with this for pumping water. Recently, I think the company's been sold, but. This doesn't require anything but human power to 
to get water. And it drains back. There's a hole in the pipe down there, so it never freezes. I use this a lot in the dead of winter time. When I come up, I don't want to unwinterize things. So I'll come out and pump whatever water I need. So with the windmills, usually I'm not using them at all unless it's in the fall when deer season's here and you get a few days where there's no sun, then I'll turn them on. For the most part, the solar takes care of all my power needs and I don't pump my water with my battery bank. I pump it with a, I got a Generac 7kW generator. And the reason for that is during deer season, there's usually five or six of us here in camp and to pump that much water for showers and everything else would just drain the battery bank. If it was just one person here or two people, you could, you could probably do it off your battery bank. You'd probably want to do it during the day when the sun's out so you're not draining on your batteries. But the wind, there's a lot of maintenance involved with it. Like right now, the brakes are on on the windmills. They're not turning. But it gets real windy all year long, and they just sit there, and with the brake on, it'll start burning out the brakes. So unless you're going to use them all the time, I wouldn't recommend putting them in. So I don't use the uh, windmills as much as I used to. Years ago, I didn't have the inverter charger that I got now. I got a Magnum Energy MS2812. It's a pure sine wave inverter with a built-in charger. So after we get back from hunting at the end of the day, we usually make supper and then watch some TV and stuff. And then everybody starts to take showers. So usually the generator is running for an hour or two. And while it does that, it's got the built-in charger. So it automatically charges the batteries. So really don't rely on the windmills as much anymore if you're gonna put them in and you use them all the time they're great but for what I'm using them for they're kind of obsolete now but they're still there down the road when I'm here more I might use them more oh go <clears throat> go ahead and So we'll go ahead and head inside these black flies and mosquitoes are going to carry me away. Alright, so we'll work on getting this mounted up for our solar tracker. Figure I'll mount it somewhere right about here. I'll be able to look out the window and adjust the panels where I want it. So we'll just kind of rough it out. Taking that off first. This bit's a little small. So 
So I'm just trying to oblong the hole to be able to get the pipe up in there. A little bit more. the whole oblong Let's double check it one more time All right. we'll cut that all right we're just gonna Get this mounted to the wall. Alright, in order to wire it up, I'm going to go up in the attic, run the wires, and I'm not going to, with the sun out baking on that metal roof, it's going to be hotter than heck up there, so I'm not going to try to film it, but I'll pick up once I get it, the wires dropped down. Alright, so like I said, switch it over this side, be a rail track to the east. Switch it over this side, it'll track to the west to catch the afternoon sun. So, say you had a real cloudy morning and then you wanted to top your batteries off and you got good afternoon sun, you could crank this baby to the west, tilt it to the west to capture as much sun as you can to put as much energy in your batteries. So, I'll demonstrate that. All right, I'll crank it back to the east now. So you can manually adjust it to track the sun throughout the day. If you have, you know, cloudy cover and you need to gain some energy. Bring it back to the middle. And then as soon as you go to the middle, it's off, and your ray stops moving.